Sebastian. Give all praise to the Most High, El Elyon, for another beautiful day, another beautiful Shabbat. All hearts and minds clear. Toto Rabah El El Young. Thank you very much, Most High, for life, for strength, for mercy, for healing, for deliverance. Toto Rabah for understanding. Toto Rabah for giving us another Shabbat day and ask that we may serve you with joy and with gladness. Ask that we may give you our full attention. And ask that we would not be satisfied with only giving a portion of ourselves unto you. Told about for, to all those who you have recently awakened to the yeah. truth. And told about for all those who have been in this walk for a year, two years, three years, four years. Even 20 years or even beyond that. I ask that you may please continue to keep us in a way that we should go. I ask that none of us will fade away. I ask that none of us will drift off into outer darkness. I, but I ask that we may be steadfast and unmovable. I ask that we would have a great level of endurance to seek after you, to seek after your commandments, and also have a strong desire to do them. And I ask that you may please remember those who have faded away, to those who have drifted off into outer darkness, to those who, who have went back to their former selves. Please remember those who are even in a worse state than what they were before you awakened them. But I ask if you be any will that you may bring them back again, and please wake them up for a second time, be in your will. I ask that you may please remember those who have become weary, those who have lost hope due to their afflictions or due to mourning or to those who have been the caretaker to the afflicted. But I ask that you may please remember them all, those who have lost hope, those who have a broken ruach, those who have a broken spirit. But I ask that you may revive them. I ask that you may build them up again. And I ask that they may be stronger than before. I ask that you may please give us that constant reassurance that you are with us, that you are the most high, and that we are on the right path. I ask that as long as we live, that we will have constant reminders from your word, from signs, from wonders, from any way, that you are with us, and that you will not forsake us. And I ask that we will not grow weary or tired of receiving those constant reminders from you, O great king, that you are the greatest power, that you are the highest power. I ask that we will not get tired of you leading us and guiding us as we're on this earth. Because without you, we are blind. Without you, we are deaf. But you are our shepherd. And you being our shepherd, we shall not lack. I ask that you may give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, and I ask that we may be fed. Please give us our daily bread. A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Elohim shall man live. Let your will be done. Amen. Why amen. So be it, and so be it. Amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom again, Ms. Makai. I'm going to turn the flow over to Maurice Shema for the culture study. Maurice Shema, you have the flow. Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Bakar. All praise, honor, esteem be to the Most High Yah. May His name be esteemed always and forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Mr. Bakar, we're going to start off our culture portion today with the language. And before we do any reading, uh, Mr. Bakar, I'm going to pull up, because like I said, we want to get back to uh, our consistency with working towards learning the language. And so I want to start off with vocabulary today. Vocabulary today, and I'm going to this is on the website, uh, Mr. Bakar, for those who are in the, uh, it's under the student portal, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it up today for the sharing the screen share uh, for those that are online. And I wanna start off with the vocabulary and uh, we would like to encourage um, everyone to uh, visit the site. Uh, there's information on the site. Um, but for those who definitely want to be a part of uh, studying Hebrew um, and getting more fluent with the growing of the language, please get with us so we can add you to the Hebrew Talmudine group, that, which we're gonna be getting back busy in here uh, momentarily. But uh, I want y'all to see the, uh, how, how, where's the share thing at? Uh, let me keep 
pull them up. Right. We work with vocabulary. As I said, as I came, there's a hard work done on getting plenty of words already ready for you to learn. So I'm going to read it as written on the uh, the screen. It says, Lynching Cultural Vocabulary. All right. It says, Genesis chapter one vocabulary. So this is the, the vocabulary words that's coming from Genesis chapter one. And in order for us to ever grow to the point of being able to read Hebrew with understanding, we're going to have to at least start building a vocabulary. The same way we're able to communicate with each other in English is because we, we know words and definitions of words. And so we can comprehend what you, each other is saying. Um, right now, we are recognizing Hebrew letters and characters, and we're able to go into the script and read the script, meaning what's actually written there. But sometimes we cannot translate it because we don't have a, a broad enough vocabulary. So we have to work on our vocabulary. So starting off uh, for our scripture reading, um, we'll be reading from the book of Bereshit. And we're starting in Genesis, since that is the beginning. It gives us a chance to discuss Genesis as well while doing so. But going back to the statement, uh, so these are the vocabulary words that's in Genesis chapter one, and it's pretty much going in order as they come in the verses um, so that the vocabulary is building as we go for verses and we try to build our vocabulary, at least being able to read. All right. So it says Genesis chapter one vocabulary. Building Hebrew vocabulary takes study and practice. So you cannot only come in and practice it on Shabbat when we say what we're going to go into. Building Hebrew vocabulary takes study and practice. So you read. Now there's words in English we don't have to try to remember what the definition is speaking for a while. But words that you don't know and that don't study, you will not actually grow to have that word in your vocabulary. You might remember it for a test, but if you only remember for the test, then you take a few weeks out and you don't study it, you're gonna lose it. So again, building Hebrew vocabulary takes study practice. Being familiar with the Hebrew alphabet, also understand, also understand who vowel pointing system for modern uh, parentheses, biblical Hebrew is essential. So remember, we uh, went into a teaching before doing a culture portion about the different dialects of Hebrew, different language systems, different Hebrew that we supposed to translate. Biblical uh, Hebrew um, form. So right now, what we're studying is the biblical Hebrew um, uh, and it uh and this five point system is essential. So, which meaning the five point system is the system of the, the dots and dashes that's either above or beneath or inside a word. So, we're trying to recognize those things. To gain an understanding of Hebrew words, you should isolate the root word from its prefix and suffix. The following list of Hebrew vocabulary is from Genesis. So, already what you're reading here is uh, going through this together. If you actually buy a Hebrew work, a Hebrew book of some type, this is how you're going to see the network. He's breaking it down for our class and our students to learn at our pace where we are directly in the scripture as we're going to find a whole bunch of information. It's too much for where we are, but as we're growing together, reading the books that we're reading, he's already having us focus on those words and he's taking the time to put this in where you don't only have to hear it, but from us sharing it with you, you can go and study just from the sheet yourself. These vocabulary so it's a time and it will be appreciative to learn together if you don't actually start going to the doctor, visit the internet and study these words sleeka sleeka moray Excuse i'm me. not sure if anyone i'm not sure if anyone else can um hear it but it's like you're almost underwater you're going in and out i don't know if i'm the only one that's hearing it but that's what i'm hearing it's, it's a lot of breaking up well, same here Give me a moment. What about now? Can y'all hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly now at this at moment. This yes. At this, at this moment, you hear me clearly. Now you're starting to break back up, kind of like a look, look like that again. Oh, we have full signal here, though. Let me just. There was a moment. Keep talking, um, Warren. I'll make it through. Y'all, I said, bear with me one moment. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk in just a moment. Bear with me just a moment. I'm going to make sure. I told, I told, I told. 
So we're going to try to make it through. Maybe the internet is giving us issues. It's showing that the internet is working. I don't know why we're coming out sounding that way at the moment now. How do I sound you now? It's clearer now. How it's clearer. Now? It's clearer now. All right. Hold on. Hold on. All right. So we're going to try to continue on and move forward. All right. So again, as I was stating, so if you if you want to actually learn the language, and we understand the language is not for everyone, but for those who are desirous to learn them, which if you want to uh, get into the Talmudian Hebrew group, which is the Hebrew students group, then please let us know. We're going to be discussing uh, numerous things in that group, different translations. And when I say different translations, meaning different dialects of Hebrew, um, where they come from, the origin, and all those different things. At some point, we're going to discuss those things and the reason why we was the group at this time. But going forward, what I want to share is that if you do desire to uh, to learn it, as Zarkane uh, has here, it says in order to uh, grow in this language, you're going to have to study. So he's already taking a time and effort to put things in a way that's going to be easily translated for you, for you to uh, study and get a vocabulary. All right. So uh, Genesis, uh, the Hebrew vocabulary, vocabulary words for Genesis chapter one. So he has here uh, Bereshit chapter one. And he says, example, Hebrew. Parentheses, pronunciation, translation, root definition, primitive, root, primitive and parent root. So he's going into a primitive root, parent root, showing you where these words come from. So in Genesis, at the very first verse, the very first word, we have Bereshit, right? Which means in the beginning. Bereshit, which is in the beginning. He's letting you know the root of Bereshit is Reshit, Reshit, which is first in place in order of sequence or in time. So Rashid is first in place, in order, sequence, or in time, is the root word. And the parent root of Rashid is Rosh. Rosh is the first, the head, the primary, the chief, the best, the beginning, right? What he's showing is when, when you see that we're trying to translate um, certain sentences and things, sometimes we don't know the word we're looking at because if you look at uh, uh, number one, better sheet, you see how many letters this is? Now, this letter is going to drop off, and it comes from this word here, Rashid. But the parent root is this word here, which is only three letters, Rosh. So sometimes, based upon what you see in the text, we're having to decide, or not decide, we're having to learn to translate what's actually written. We have to know rather than this prefix, the suffix, which you have this bet here, um, this added to Rashid. But what he's giving you already is you know that this is the word that's written in the text that you see on the first line. So everything is written by the numbers are the words that's written in the actual text or the scripture. So better sheet, which is in the beginning, and giving you the root of it. So it comes from the word reshi, or again, which is first in play order, a sequence in time, which has a parent root. And all Hebrew words, the majority of Hebrew words, has a three-letter parent root, which is going to be rosh, okay? Rosh, which is first, primary, chief, best thing. So whenever you're supposed to give to the most high, your best, you're supposed to give to him the first. This way it's come from the order, so the Rosh, all right? So moving forward. Ba, bara, which is created, okay? Created. Root word is going to be very similar and sound is exactly like bara. It's to shape, to fashion, to create, to fashion. To shape, fashion, create, or fashion, uh, 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 or fashion right? Which is bara. The third word we have is Elohim, 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 which most people uh, uh, put as God in the, in the English, but I prefer the term mighty one or power um, just because there's other things that go behind the word God, but I don't have an issue when I'm dealing with someone that does not yet know the truth. And if you remember what it's uh, in the book, how Sean Paul said, be all things to all people. So we can't speak to people and the mistake we make a lot of times Hebrews we become so Hebrew, and once we get an understanding of what something means, oh, you can't say that. <laughs> if a person asks you, do you believe in God? I don't believe in God. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not. No, don't say that. that they're already going to shut down. They're going to oh, you say you don't believe in God. So they're going to shut. They don't, even though you might have learned the origin of God and what it may mean, still, Paul said, be all things, all people. In the English and in the words that's being utilized, and people that's in the church, they're looking at God as the creator of heaven and earth, which is in Genesis. In the beginning, God created. They're used to hearing God. So what we understand is where God is written in the English text, where the word Elohim or Allah is normally going to be written, right? But for me, the better translation of it would be mighty one or power. He's our mighty one. He's our power. 
But we have an issue with God understanding that most of the people that we talk to and our families know that now. What you teach them, hey, when you hear me say Elohim, if you hear me say ah, all I mean is the mighty one of the power or the creator. So when you're thinking of God, I just happen to you, you can explain it to them later. But they asking you about salvation, you don't need to go into, oh, you're supposed to say God. We we always take stuff off of subject matter and I always want to go into teaching something they didn't even ask us. And we're not supposed to be teaching vocabulary and semantics all the time. We should be asking questions and living rights before people. But just since we're in here, I just want to understand things going forward. All right. So then it has here the root word of Elohim is going to be Eloah. Eloah. All right. Eloah. Um, and it says uh, the God that he has is the most high, the creator, the almighty. Parent root, they have in, in. In because of the PowerPoint, some would say if they don't use in the cool PowerPoint system, you have them say Allah, Allah, Allah. But when you use the PowerPoint system, you see El, and we get into all those different reasons of the pronunciation differences at another later date. But it says Power, Might, Almighty One. And again, remember we're saying we're using the biblical Hebrew. So if you're looking in uh, dictionaries and lexicons and things like that. This will be the form that you would step for. That's why we have it here. So that whenever you have your reference of uh, things like that, you can identify it's actually being um, utilized. All right. You go on to the root parent. All right. Next one we have is Hashemayim. Hashemayim. Hashemayim is the heaven. The heaven. The root word is Shemayim. Shemayim. So uh, Shemayim, which is heaven, heaven, sky. Right. They have the parent root, which is. Shemay, hey, to be lofty. All right, so he's, he's bringing it all the way down. So what? I think we we might have lost him. Um, dropped out. He'll probably be right back. Um, anybody got any questions until he comes back? I don't have a question, but I um I can't wait for the video to come out next week so that I could take my time and do it, like learn it. I you okay. okay. and, and y'all know on the same uh webpage where uh Moray is, is uh reading from. There are videos on there of uh, cultural and language lessons. All right. Uh, I don't see he's back yet. And and I just want to say too that that uh, for those that are that are new. Or maybe this is the first time you, you're seeing uh, the Hebrew breakdowns. Um, don't get intimidated. Um, this was uh, this breakdown, this vocabulary list was uh, generated when the students were already they already knew the alphabet and they already knew the uh, vowel systems. Um, so if if you're new or you're interested in, in in getting into it, don't don't be intimidated by this uh, vocabulary breakdown. Um, like I said, this was already presented to the students after they've uh, learned uh, the alphabet and learned the um, the vowel system. And one more key too is is the pronunciation is is um, you might see it different in in literature than the way we have it on this uh, PDF form, but it's just how it sounds. It, it you know don't don't pay too much attention to how it's spelled or anything like that, but just try and sound out how that word uh, is pron is pronounced. Um, so like I said, if you go to a lexicon or um, you know like a, a Strong's or BDB or something like that, you might see the pronunciation spelled different, but the sound should be the same. Is that Cain? Yes, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Would that be uh, analogous to the spelling of uh, K-O-O-L versus C-O-O-L? 
but they're both sounding out cool. Uh, King and and uh, Moray will go into it, um, um, but you know there's different dialects. So you got like um, um, how can I put it? You got the the Masari dialect, which is like you'll get like a um, the different Hebrew. Um, how can I put it? Uh, so like up north, you would say you you would probably hear it more uh, accented as a K. And down south, you might get it more accented as a CH, but the sound should be very close to the same. So like if you if you if you're uh, I don't want to get too uh, technical, but it's it's really like Moray said, uh, the dialect. Um, and and if you're learning um, Israeli Hebrew. Um, versus the other um, dialects of Hebrew. You'll see it. Um, sometimes you'll see the K, where in other times you'll see it as a CH. I hope that makes sense. Um, but but really, what it is is the sound is what you're trying to 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 uh, regenerate. What that word sounds like when it's when it's spoken. But you know, uh, Moray did a good example one time too. Like like here uh, in North Carolina, we would say hot dog but in um like uh detroit or something like that it would be doug hot doug you know what i mean even though it's spelled the same um it's just regionally it's pronounced a little bit different so i hope that answers uh uh Zakane. like like uh depending on the dialect you see it as a ch or sometimes depending on the dialect you see it as a k oh, and it really yeah. depends on the accent how yeah. they're accenting it hello yeah Start Looks like Moray is back. Um, you want me to take Mikael's question, Moray? Are you ready to get back into it? Yeah, you, you can go ahead and take his question. Uh, Adon Mikael, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I was just thinking about tomato and tomato when you were talking about it, the dialects. King, King. How do I sound now, Zakane? Am I clear now? Uh, it still sounds a little uh, weak, like like breaking up uh, a little weak, but we can understand it. I can understand what you're saying. Okay, well, if I if I drop out of something, will you or Johannes send me a message to my phone so that I uh, know that I'm uh, know that I'm out? King. Yeah, I'll just, I normally don't have my phone on ring, but I'm going to turn it on ring so I hear their message when it comes through. Toda. All right. Uh, what was the last uh, portion you were just talking about, Zakane? I heard you saying about the CH, and I didn't yeah. hear that part. Uh, we were talking about uh, in the parentheses how how we're um, uh, pronouncing the word, um, and mm -hmm. and Zakane Eliyahu posed a question that sometimes you'll see uh, C H O O L versus K O O L, but it still sounds the same. Cool. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, one thing we're doing when we're writing it into English form, we transliterate. So we're trying to bring the sound over, trying to tell you how to pronounce it. So you hear some people with Elohim, you have the I-M at the end uh, for the heme, or you have see some have the E-E-M ending. So what we see in the transliteration form does not, it's just trying to uh, convey the sound that's brought over. So uh, a lot of times when people are putting it, different people that translate, they try to put it in a form that's simplest enough for a person to understand the sounds that the Hebrew's making. So um, so sometimes you could see it spelled differently, but the sound a lot of times is the same. They're trying to bring the sound over, and it depends on the school of thought um, that uh, does that as well. So told out for that. So don't get too caught up on um, uh, the, the letters that I came out of using the parentheses, but the main letters that we need to be able to recognize are the actual Hebrew alphabet, because these need to always be correct or we change the meaning of the word, because this will be the actual word that's written in the text. So anytime we see any of these words out of order, you know, uh, out of any of these letters out of order, then we definitely need to question it because it means something totally different. If you take the letter out of its sequence and you put another letter there that could sound similar, it changes the whole word. But in our transliteration form, these letters that's in parentheses is just trying to convey or bring this sound over from the uh, from the Hebrew into the English. All right. So I think we was at, yeah, we were here at Hayata. Uh, so again, we have Hayata, which is it or was. 
and it comes from the root word haya, haya. And rather he would have put the H on the end or no H on the end, haya, haya will still pretty much be the same. But it is actually written in the uh, concordance as H A Y H. Haya, that Y H on the end is not the name of Yah. And, and that's, that is not the name of Yah. This is one word. Haya is a word. So though it may look to have the appearance of the name of Yah in it, this is not uh, uh, Haya, meaning the Yah or, or the Most High's name. This is simply Haya. This word itself is one word. Um, there's not a prefix here. This is one singular word, which is Haya was come become come to pass or exist and the parent root uh which is another one that we go into is going to be hawa hawa which is going to be the hey wa aleph uh hawa and it's to be be shall be have breath have breath or to exist as well if you look up hawa so it's going to tell you that one of these has a more ancient root than one that has a more modern root but that's going to be the word haya which means to be or to exist. All right. And we're going to move forth to the seventh. Oh, we might do 10 words a day. Yeah, we'll make it through 10 words a day. Then the seventh word will be tohu. Tohu. You know, and, and you see, he has it written here two different ways. He has tohu here with a W on the end, and he just has tohu here without the W on the end, uh, which goes into what he was explaining a, a moment ago. That you can see that as long as transliteration, you can understand that this is trying to make this sound. So tohu or tohu is the same, but he wrote it two different ways here, um, without form. All right. The root word is going to be uh, from tohu, it sounds exactly alike, which is emptiness, formless, without purpose, dysfunctional. Then you have here, wabohu, wabohu. And as you see here, you have B-O-W-H-O-O, -O, bohu, or he has B-O-H-U. So pretty much uh, in transliteration, even though he might have spelled it different here, it's only trying to bring over the sound that the sound would come over into uh, into the English uh, for us to be able to pronounce it. So we have wabohu, wabohu, and void. So uh, and void, and it comes from the root word bohu. So there's an actual uh, a prefix or there's something fronted on the beginning of this one. So the actual root word, and that's why I said we need to be able to identify the root word first. When we're trying to translate Hebrew, we're trying to read the language. Like I said, when there are different letters added to the word, sometimes we get confused as to what it is, and we have to work our way back to find out what the root word is. So we don't start off building a root word vocabulary. We will never be able to grow full in English, I mean, not in the, English, in the Hebrew language, and learn to read it and translate it fluently. So we must, as Arcane said, we must study uh, diligently if we want to actually obtain these words. All right, so bohu. Bohu is empty, as in hollow, no contents, all right? And again, when you have wabohu is what's written in the text in Bereshit or Genesis chapter one. But bohu is the root word. The vav or the wa that's here is a prefix that's added before um, joining this thought uh, to another, which a lot of times means and, okay? The ninth word for the day is gonna be wachoshek, 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 and darkness, and darkness. The root word is koshek, koshek, dark night obscurity. Again, you see here that in the text in Bereshit, you're going to see wa koshek, but the root word of wa koshek is koshek because the wa is added to koshek, which means and darkness, all right, and darkness. Wa koshek, koshek, dark night obscurity. Parent root, kashak, kashak. So uh, the difference in the way, so you see the letters are exactly the same. We have here ket, shin, and ka, but the difference is the vowel pointing system. So when you see the vowel points here, we have a kometz and a patak here. Here we have a holum and we have a segol. Okay, we have a holum and a segol, but all the letters are exactly the same, right? You see the ket, shin, kaf, ket, shin, kaf, but the nakuds are making it make a different sound. So the root of koshek comes from kashak. So if you don't know the Naku vowel pointing system, there's some people that don't use the Naku vowel pointing system at all. So they would not recognize koshek. They're going to only recognize kashak. One of the things that uh, I don't subscribe to here at our Knesset is, is knocking any dialect of Hebrew that one may speak. There are congregations and assemblies that will uh, make mockery of each other based upon the dialect of Hebrew that one may speak. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to teach everything clean. We're trying to be as, as informative as, as possible. I'm still online, right? 
Okay. As, as informative as possible. So for someone to say kashak means dark, and for somebody to climb up and say, oh, they ain't speaking a real Hebrew, well, actually, they're still speaking Hebrew because before you can have koshek, you have to have kashak. It's the same letters, but the difference is some people use the Nakul vowel pointing system, some doesn't. And so we'll get into that in more detail at a later date as to the reason why you do need to understand that there are other vowels other than just the A class vowel, which we won't cover at this time. But I just want to touch some of these points as we're going forward. So that's the reason why, you know, a lot of times you will hear us interchange dialects based upon who we're speaking to. So the root word or the parent root is kashak, uh, which is the root word koshek, which comes, uh, which gives you wakoshek. If someone was to say wakashak, you know, uh, we would still, I would still understand them to be saying in darkness, all right? Because they went to the parent root form. And the last word we're going to cover for the day is going to be al pane, al pane. So al is definitely not even connected to this word at all. You see here, this is divided, but this is how it's written in his scriptures. So what Zakane has done is he put the uh, the words that should be joined together for the understanding. He did it this way here. So al pane, al pane. And he wrote here, it's in parentheses, is the actual root word, pane. But al is what's prefixed to it. Upon the face, because al in Hebrew means upon. So al pane is upon the face, okay? Upon the face, upon face. The root word for pane is uh, uh, pane, which is uh, the root, pane, which is face, front, or edge. The parent root is going to be pana, pana, to turn around, to face, to face away, to look, to turn. So if you hear a lot of people, uh, when they use the face, they say pana. Punya, you know, a lot of the brothers that use what they consider um, uh, the Lashua Kodash, you might hear them say Punya. The reason why they say Punya, because they're saying Punya, they, they, they're using the actual just the parent root. They're not actually going to using the Naku system. So therefore, that's why we have difference in dialect. But I don't want us to get accustomed to knocking other people's dialect. And that's why I say for those who want to get more into it, some things won't cover on this platform, but it's just our basic cultural portion that we do on Shabbat. But to get more into it and to discuss the different Hebrew language systems and pronunciations and why we may be subscribing at certain points to one or the other, we can explain that more so at another time. So this is just the vocabulary. Again, this is on the website, uh, True Light by Yafia's website, um, and this is under student portals. So those who are desirous to learn Hebrew, part of the learning will be on your own time because we can't actually go forward until you actually start learning the letters, learning the vowel point system, uh, remember your vocabulary words. So I know a lot of times we want to read, 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 but we don't only want to read what's written. We need to start reading with understanding. And I will say y'all did a great job last week for the Hebrew readers that came up. Y'all read it, Hebrew, and y'all also edified in English. And that is a bunch of growth. And I say, hallelujah for that. But what we're trying to do as a Knesset, we're all trying to do in this culture portion, trying to at least hear out a little bit of vegetables every Shabbat, even for those who don't want it, just from hearing it, they're going to retain from hearing us go repetitively each Shabbat. They're going to hear and they're going to retain some of these words as well. So I wanted to do vocabulary words before we did our reading. So now I'm going to stop this screen share. And we're now about to do the Hebrew reading. So a lot of times we're reading without understanding, but we just covered 10 Hebrew vocabulary words. Mishpachai, 10 Hebrew vocabulary words. All those that are in attendance, I hope you remember some of them. For those who are in the uh, Hebrew Talmudian group and those that desire to learn Hebrew, as we're going to be getting our Hebrew calendar um, as established as far as classes outside of Shabbat, um, I expect you all to know those 10 words. So next Shabbat, you know, I, I, I definitely uh, want to call those words out without sharing the screen. And those who have already been reading Hebrew for a moment from understanding the language that you do at this moment, I want you all to actually know those 10 vocabulary words. Actually, I want y'all to know them today. <laughs> cause y'all, cause y'all, some of y'all should already know them. I can't put this out how long ago. So again, uh, a thing I'm saying also, Mishpaka, and this is the maturity and the growth that we're trying to have at our at our Knesset. We're trying to remain consistent. I know a lot of times when someone new comes in, there's certain material we won't cover because when someone new comes in, we want to make sure we introduce them to Yah, His Law, Statutes, and Commandments. And so somebody might come and be like, what are they talking about? I don't get it. And they may leave. And we've seen it happen before. So sometimes when we see visitors come in that's coming from the church and things like that, we want to make sure we're doing something culturally that they can understand, teaching them the principles of Torah, commandments, and who Yah is, his name, so on and so forth, what day they should worship. But when, when it's just us in the house, we want to stay consistent 
and true to task. And so this Hebrew vocabulary and learning the language is gonna be key that we wanna do because we wanna get to the point where we can all read the language fluently, all right? Or somewhat fluently. We wanna read more than what we're reading now. We wanna be able to come up to uh, on Shabbat service. We wanna have multiple people, that, multiple people that can read from the Torah of the Tanakh in the Hebrew and explain to you what's being read, all right? So that's the goal. So Hebrew students, I made that statement for a reason. We all ask things like, when are we going to do Hebrew? When are we going to have class again? When are we starting back? You know, we've heard, had those type of questions. But you know one thing that motivates you to want to start back is what we seen last week. When those members could come up and they read, read that word, they read it fluently because you heard they was practicing, and they could edify what they read. That's encouraging. But when people say, when are we going to do it again? And you, you, you get up and say, okay, you got Bereshit chapter one, and you hear this, and I'm not making mockery. I'm just being transparent. This is also our maturity. Here's how we got to start talking to each other as a family. And we, people wanting certain things, but then are, do you really want to put it together? Because that's an extra lesson that we have to prepare. You've seen what Zakane, that's only uh, uh, one sheet. That one sheet that Zakane prepared has over 30 some words on it already. And he broke all those words down like that for you all to have an easy study guide. He has another one ready to go right after that. So what would keep him motivated to keep having the translation come forward in that form when he gets up and he's able to hear someone say, better sheep by our Elohim, eight ha shamayim, wa eight ha adets. In the beginning, created. Who created Elohim? What did he create? Ha shamayim, wa ha et, and what? Ha adets, the earth. When he can see you doing that, when we can see that. But if we've been going through this and he got all the stuff posted online and it's taking the time to do it, and you hear a person get up because we ain't do it in two weeks. Buh, buh. Ba, ba, ra. that don't really motivate you no more because it's like they're you're not doing any more than what on his list he said what you must study we teach in class and then you must go home and do what study at your own time if you're not studying how can we even move forward we're not even desirous to move forward right or to continue doing certain things because you don't see the time to go into it but i'm pretty sure y'all just seen that list that we just went over that was time consuming for him to get the hebrew script and then go through and break all those things down, transliteration, root form to parent root form. So I'm asking if, if we want to continue with the Hebrew, and that is the goal of our Knesset, then we ask if y'all would practice your Hebrew reading. And so starting off the day, we're going to have Zamiria. And for the sake of time, we're only going to get a few. Um, Zamiria, you'll be reading today. Uh, and we want Bereshit, chapter, uh, chapter 1. And I want verses 1 through 5. You say how to do screen share? It's not on there. I'm not screen share. Oh, uh, the uh, more we don't see the screen share. All right, sleek out in one moment. Let's get a screen up. Talia, you gonna be next? I could the Shaquan. I know you say you don't feel well today, but do you want to read? Okay, you say you don't want to read today. All right, all right, all right. All right. Mm -hmm. I might switch it. <laughs> she already asked what she's going to read about the pre-read. <laughs> Zamiria has Bereshit chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. You, got, you can read off your screen, right? Yeah. Read live. So you. Bereshit, Bara, Elohim, Et, Hashemayim, Wa Et, Ha'aret, Wa Koshet, let me, let me read it again. Pause for a second. And that's something else we do too, Mishra Kyle. Once we get to a point where we think we remember something, we don't want you doing it from cadence, right? Because some things become cadence. That's why I mix it up sometimes. So cadence are looking at something quickly on site. You think you know what it is, but no, you have to read this because she just said Koshek. The Koshek don't come up for a while. All right, let's get back with it. No, start from the beginning of the two. Waharet Hayata Tohu Wabohu Wakoshe Al Pane Tahon Tahon Waruak Elohim Mara Kefet Al Pane Hamayim Wayomir Elohim Yahi or Wayahi or Wayora Elohim et haor ki to wayabadel wayabadel Elohim ben haor ubein ha 
Belichick, Wally Cross, Elohim, La Oris, Young, Wala Kochek. See how far that came up. <laughs> <laughs> Read. Um, Para, Laila, Wayahi, Erev, Wayahi, Boher, Young, Erev. I mean, Erev. All right, hallelujah. Talia, come on forward. Hallelujah. Good reading, good reading, good reading. Hallelujah. Huh? No, we're not breaking it down today for the sake of time. We just want to get y'all practice in for the reading. We went over the vocabulary this week, so no one has an excuse next week when we, when we want them to read. All right. Now, if you want to break something down, you can. But I mean, if you just want to do that, all right. So I want uh, uh, six through eight. Okay. Why your man? Hello, Steve. Yehi, Rakia, Bato, Amahim, Vihi, Mabil, Bain, Mahim, La Mahim, Wayahaz, Halohim, Et, Arakia, Wayabil, Bain, Hamahim, Ashur, Mitakat, La Rakia, Hu Bain, Hamahim, Ashur, Mihal, La Rakia, Wahi came. Yeah, Wahi hey. Kra, Elohim, La Rakia, Shamahim, Waye, Wayehi Arev, Wayehi Bokor, Bakir Yom Shani. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Zakane, let me ask you a question so far. How you feeling, Zakane? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, uh, sister says she didn't want to. Uh, do we have anyone online? Is Abazion, is someone online? I can't see the room. Abazion, did you want to read? Is she online? Is that Kane? Kane. All right, I just lost, I, I, was, I lost my screen because I was coming to see if he was on. All right, can y'all still see my screen? Kane, we can see it. All right. And Bassion, uh, these are some long verses, but I'm going to say nine through 12. Somebody said, mm, in the room too, sister. They said, mm. <laughs> nine through 12. Nine through 12. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now you're on the screen, so it's a little bit smaller for me. All right. Um, Wayomer Elohim Yikabu. Hamayim Mitakat Hashamayim El Makom. I had to stand up. I'm sorry. One second. I'm straining here. Oh. Oh, uh, if you have your own script, you can read from your script. I'm just, uh, I'll follow on the screen, but if you want to read from oh, your no, own I'm gonna, You're on the TV, so I'm, I just had to move closer to the TV. Okay. Okay. Um, Ekad Batera. E ha ya basha ve yehi ken va yikra elohim la abasha eretz ul mik be hamaim kara yamaim yamim ve yare elohim kito. Vayomer Elohim Tadeshte Tad Se Ta Eret Dese Eshtev Mitzria Mitzria Zera Zera Et Et Peri Use Peri let me know, I share their all bow al ha aretz va yehi ken va tose ha aretz dese no deshe esev matzria zere zere zera. Right, Zera, not Zara. Zera, mm -hmm. Lemina, who? Lemi, Nehu, Va, mm -hmm. et, 
Oste Heri Asher Zer Opo. I think saying that word. Uh, Le Minehu Wayare Elohim Kito. Good reading, good reading. Yeah. So, Mishmaka, I'm going to tell y'all, uh, y'all seen she had a few little hiccups, but she still got it, right? Because she held her cadence, right? It's no different for me. I just want y'all to know that. Like, uh, one through five, one through seven, one through 10, you know, some of the words that you already have the vocabulary for and you're used to and you're familiar with because you went over them, it's easier than the words that you have not uh, gone over for uh, repeatedly yet. So that's why we have to stay consistency. And as we stay consistent, we become more fluent with it as we continue to move forward um, with this. But uh, Batsion, you did a great and outstanding job. And uh, before we close out, uh, what time do we have? 107, so we're about to come to the close. What did she stop at 12? And we're gonna uh, we're gonna close this thought uh, with Kanakya with verse thirteen. Wahi Arev, Wahi Boker Yom Shalishi. Hallelujah! Just want to complete the thought. <laughs> so and there was even and there was morning the third day. Hallelujah! So that's gonna be the only readers for the day, Mishpaka. And, uh, and I selected those readers uh, for a reason um, because it gives others encouragement. When you see and when you remember where someone started from and when you get and you hear them doing so, it's a goal or mark that we want to aim for to achieve, right? And the other readers are good readers also, but I just wanted them to read more to help build their confidence because a lot of times for them to get their practice on, sometimes only getting two verses is not actually helping them. So it also builds their encouragement also like, wow, I read seven verses, I read five verses and I, I hardly had any pauses. And when I got onto the hard verse that I really I didn't read that much, I went through that thing like a beast. You know, that, that gives encouragement to, again, myself as I can, y'all probably say, hey, let's get it. They, they want to get it. And then you see others like, wow, they're doing better. And you start studying. But that did not come from just Shabbat service. I'll tell you that now. That did not come just from them coming in on Shabbat service doing the reading. That came from the desire to want to read themselves. And they studied the language at home. So again, Mr. Bakar, that's going to be our cultural portion. Um, for the language. And I do have one short portion, um, just culturally, that I want to cover today. I'm going to be real brief with this portion. Um, so we all know uh, there's a commandment that says, Zakor et yom hashabat la kwarasho. Zakor et yom hashabat la kwarasho, which is remember the Sabbath day to keep it set apart. We know that in the book of Yeshayahu, it tells us to restrain from our own pleasures and all those things on, Shab on Shabbat. But I want to cover something um, real quick. And let's go to the book of Why You Cry, just in regards to the Sabbath. And it's not to be offensive to anyone. I just, because I know there's different things that we will hear um, in, in society, in, in more so uh, specifically our communities. There are those that are pro Shabbat, there are those that are anti Shabbat. All right. So let's go to the book of Why You Cry, which is Leviticus 23. And start with verse one. <clears throat> Y'all spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of Yah, which you shall proclaim, be holy assemblies, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy assembly. You should do no work. Pause, pause for a second. So, what's something that we see here um, just in these two verses? In regards to Shabbat. Six days, what 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 you, what you say happened? So it's giving us a visual or focal point, right? Rest and work, rest and no work, right? Rest and no work. It's gonna be first a first focal point that was introduced to the children of Israel, right? It says, and Yah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning. The Moedim of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be set apart convocations. These are my Moedim, right? What it says in verse 3, Kanakya? Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. The Holy Assembly, you shall. So, culturally, since we said this is a cultural portion, we want to know what they was doing in cultural times back during that time. Moshe taught the children of Israel law, statutes, and commandments. He taught them Torah. 
So it is imperative that we study Torah on Shabbat, right? Because he was actually giving them the word. When you even get to the Brit Kadashah, it says they had Moshe and the Torah taught when? Every Shabbat. So whether you're reading from a Torah-only perspective or if you read the Brit Kadashah, the Brit Kadashah still points you back to what? To the Torah. It says they had Moshe and the commandments of the Torah read every Shabbat day, which lets us know that if we wouldn't read the Torah every Shabbat, if we want to get back to our cultural norm, what should we be doing every Shabbat? Reading Torah every Shabbat. Why? Because that's where the instructions of the Most High is written. So it's a time of learning the words of the Most High. So what are we doing for six days? Working, right? And sometimes you get off work, you might be a little what? Tired. And you might need to get a little what after you get off work? But now if you have Shabbat, the most I started that day is rest. No work. And what should you do on Shabbat? Rest. But what else? Study Torah. <laughs> Holy Convocation. Everything that he just said here, right? Culturally, but we have to understand that he has a day to set aside like, look, Malek Dawi said, I'm going to meditate in your word what? So even though we work, we should still be studying every day, right? But the point of the righteousness of our creator, he said, look, I know y'all have to labor and work because I'm telling you, if you don't work, you don't eat. However, I create a day where you don't have to go to work. Shut it down. Get you a little rest. And then you get up and you worship me. You learn what I want you to do. You study the Torah. And so from the Brit Kadashah says, they had Moshe and the Torah taught every Shabbat. So then we should understand that every Shabbat, we should be doing what? Going into Torah. We just did Hebrew reading. Where did we do it from? Ha Torah, all right? All right. So six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Shabbat of rest, a set-apart convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath unto Yah in all your dwellings. So who is the Sabbath to? So can any man away with something that is to Yah? I'm going to say it again. Can any man away with something that's to Yah? No. In where? <laughs> that part is what I want to focus on for study today. It said in all your dwellings. I have a question. Was every Israelite a Levite? There's a common saying that there's how many laws? I may not be in 100% agreement with this, but there's a saying that's called the what? Well, from one side of the house, uh, from the church side of the house, they know there's what they commonly call Ten Commandments. But in the Hebraic community, the 613, they would tell you that 613 commandments, meaning that's what? A lot of commandments. Some of the 613, if we're going to use that number, right? Some of that does not apply to me. But I still need to know it because it does apply to me. I'm not a woman. So there's certain things that apply specifically to women that women must do. But as a man, as a Zakar, that must remember and teach Torah, I must know what women must and mustn't do. And I must know when and when not to come upon a woman or come into a woman. Because if she's unclean, I cannot be what? With her and her uncleanliness or else I become what? Unclean also. So, but the unclean law and the laws of purification that she must follow, that's woman specific. Why did I go there? Well, all Israel Levites. So there are actually laws or ceremonial laws that only who could perform? Levites. Only Levites could perform. When well, a Levite's going to work. <laughs> Let me ask you that. Was the Levites going to work? They were going to work for the Most High, right? They were going to work for the Most High. And when you look at the encampment of the children of Israel, when he brought them out into the wilderness and he gave them an encampment, he put the children of Levi in the middle and he put all the other tribes on the exterior and they would go to and fro. And it says, you cannot enter into the Levites unclean. A stranger is not to come in. And back in the day, I used to think because I came up on a certain teaching, I thought that that stranger meant a goyim. No, that stranger was also an Israelite that was not supposed to be doing things pertaining to the priest. And you were not supposed to come into certain places because you were not a priest. Okay. So what, where am I going with this? There are also laws that specific to who? To the priests, right? Does anything in the commandment tell us that the Torah of Shabbat keeping is only supposed to be in the land, and if you don't have a sacrifice 
And if you don't have a temple, you can't keep Shabbat, is my question. He said, you should keep Shabbat where? Because what was the purpose of Shabbat given to man for? From what? To rest from sacrifice. That's what it said, right? To rest from what? Rest from work. So in the very beginning, the creator, before there was even a man to populate the arets or the earth, before we was even thought of to be Israel, I mean, he already had it thought of, but before we even existed, six days he created everything. On the sixth day he created man. And on Shabbat, he did what? Ceased or rest. And introduced man to Shabbat, right to rest. The goodness of a father. The purpose of Shabbat was not for sacrifice. The purpose of Shabbat was for us to rest and to serve Yah. So we have to be very careful when we hear people, because like I said, once you get into the community, and especially you have social media, play, and this is not trying to be offensive to anyone. And if you are one to teach it, I still love you as a brother. And it's not for debate. I'm not trying to debate. I'm in my Knesset teaching those that's in my Knesset who the Most High has me over, as well as those who tune into our teachings. So I don't do the debate thing. I'm only sharing information. And I hope it's informative to all who may listen in. But back to the point. Back to the point. It was created from the very beginning. When you look at what he did, he didn't say he stopped sacrificing in the beginning because the creator didn't sacrifice. It said he ceased from all his work and he created that day for man to do what? To rest and to worship him. So to say we don't have to keep Shabbat in the land that we're in because there's no temple, there was no temple in the beginning except Yah, who was going to be the meek dosh of the sanctuary for man, right? He brought man into existence. He brought man into Shabbat. Hallelujah. So if you read precept on precept line upon line, you understand Shabbat was for man to rest and for man to serve Yah. And so though we may not have a temple, we understand we cannot sacrifice. We understand that, but we can learn how to love Yah with our whole heart, soul, and might. And we can learn how to love our neighbors ourselves. Thou should not steal. That's what you come to Shabbat for, to learn, thus saith the Most High Yah. We were expelled from the land because what? We broke his commands. What should we be learning in captivity? how to return to his commands and keep his commands. So therefore, Mishmachai, we should embrace Shabbat, right? I'm going to close with this. Let's go to Bereshit. Real quick. And if you would read this for me, Adon. We're going to Bereshit, which is Genesis 18, verse 19. Bereshit, or Genesis 18, verse 19. Bereshit Genesis 18, verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall guard the way of Yah to do justice and judgment, that Yah may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of, of him. So what did he know about Abraham? What he said, uh, he knew that Abraham would do. He would command his children, he would raise his house aright, he would teach them to do what? Be obedient and keep the what? The commands of the Most High, right? So if we go all the way to our forefathers in Torah, let Torah be our witness as to what they was doing on Shabbat or doing in ancient times. Abraham, who is the forefather of faith, as they call him, Abraham, who the actual covenant was given to for Yisrael, he kept the Most High's commandments and he taught his Yaladin to do what? Keep the commandments. And that's why he found favor in the sight of the Most High. So when I'm looking at the text and I see people that was called the friend of Yah based upon their lifestyle, I'm going to say that it's my belief based upon just reading the scriptures. Yes, there was not a Levite yet in the time of Abraham, but there was what they call Melchizedek, which was already a priesthood, right? But the fact that men knew when they went onto the ark to bring clean and unclean animals, it didn't take us to get to uh, Shemot chapter 20 to know there was clean and unclean animals. So you have some to say, well, the Torah didn't come into Exodus chapter 20. So you believe that Abraham didn't know Torah? <laughs> we believe Noah didn't know Torah, but he knew not to take. <laughs> Israel was in captivity, not coming out. They had to be introduced to what? Torah. But Torah already existed. The Most High has always given. When he, when he brought the first man into the earth, he said, I breathe in him to what? The Nashima, the breath of Kai, the breath of life. 
and he told him what and what not to eat. What is that? Torah is instruction. Yah has always instructed his people. So Abraham knew what Shabbat was because Abraham knew about the beginning and what was created in the beginning better than we did. So do we think Abraham didn't keep, keep Shabbat? So he taught his children to do what? Keep the commands of the Most High. He raised his house to right. So that is the time, uh, Mr. Pratt, all your dwellings. And what I want to focus on now is in all your dwellings. We understand we cannot sacrifice anyway, right? But in all your dwellings, if you cannot make it to Shabbat service, in your house of Jehovah Yaladim on Shabbat, your household needs to shut down. It needs to be a Shabbat household. In our maturity, Mishpachah, we need to get back to praying over our Yaladim, husbands, coverings of the house. Pray over your Yaladim and pray over your wife on Shabbat. Y'all bring that Shabbat in together. You and the Ema of the household send up Shabbat blessings over the household and over your Yaladim and over your children. And y'all sit and have Shabbat discussions with your Yaladim, with your children, and with one another, and go to the Seb Yah. That is what Shabbat is for. We can come home from work and ask, how is your day? We can get to Shabbat and we all go into different rooms. It's time to rest. <laughs> Shabbat is also a day that's created for family to come together in Yah. And there should be a priest in the household teaching his family. Not a Levitical priest, but the head of the house is like a priest of his household, making sure you are putting the word of the Most High in your house. Because Abraham himself was not a Levite either. But he taught his children to keep the commands of the Most High. So if we don't have time, which we want to do, we all of us want more time with our family to teach the word of the Most High. But if you don't have any other time in all your dwellings, wherever you may be, sometimes we're out of town and we can't come together for Shabbat, right? Does that mean Shabbat is not going on because nobody don't see me being set apart? You better still keep Shabbat wherever you are. Cease from your wet, cease from your so, from, um, from your work, cease from the, your own pleasures. Get in your word and study the word of Yah on Shabbat. So with that, that's cultural information for the children of Yah so that we can return back to our Father. And with that, I give all praise, honor, esteem to the Most High. May his name be esteemed always and forevermore. Hallelujah. Before I move and give it to uh, Adon Kanakia, Zakane Yaakov, you had any words on that portion? Um, um, no, Moray, I don't have anything to add to that. That was, that was very edifying. Hallelujah. All right, Toda Rabbah, Toda Rabbah, to Most High Yah. I'm now giving the floor over to Adon Kanakia. I sleep, I mentioned because I didn't know that we did not have camera on in house. I'm now turning the floor over to Adon Kanakia for his two minutes.